Boker Tov, or Tzoharayim Tovim, good morning, good afternoon, depending on your time zone. Uh, Shabbat Shalom and welcome. My name is Zach Lasker. I have the honor of being Open Temple's Executive Director by day and on Shabbat, our resident yoga instructor. It's a pleasure to have you here. We're gonna be pretty prop light today. I would recommend that you have um, access to two yoga blocks or thick hardcover books. Those will certainly serve you well. Um, other than that, the rest of the props are optional. If you enjoy practicing with a strap, um, especially during for forward folds, that can serve you well. By all means, you can grab that. And if you know that you like towels or blankets, anything to make the practice restorative in moments where that is what your heart is telling you, by all means, grab blankets and towels. One disclaimer or, or note of caution that I always like to share at the start of a yoga session, and it's so much more important when we're doing this virtually, is that I want everybody to be very mindful of the, th the uh, threshold between a little bit of heat and discomfort, which can be very healthy in a yoga practice. And it's certainly what we confront off the mat in life and the area of pain. Don't cross over that threshold. If you feel or experience any um, sensations of pain, that's a really important signal to take a step back, to come into a previous pose, to sit in Sukhasana or in child's pose. And I'll, I'll demonstrate those poses early on in the practice. Um, so please be mindful of that. And for those of you who haven't joined in a while or are new to this yoga practice, um, we decided to dedicate the first couple of months, or few months, I should say, of 2021 to exploring the Jewish tradition of Musar and how it comes into play in our yoga practice. Musar is a Jewish tradition of ethical behavior, and it encompasses a series of soul traits, traits and attributes that really lead to human decency or perhaps even being a mensch. And each week we are looking at one attribute, one soul trait at a time. And so far on our journey, we've looked at attributes like humility and patience and gratitude, compassion, equanimity, order. And today we've arrived at the soul trait of honor, of kavod. And I gave a, a small homework assignment for those of you that get the weekly reminders. And if you, you didn't prepare, no worries. Now could be your time for preparation. And that was to think of someone in your life on whom you'd like to bestow what in Hebrew we call a keter shem tov, the crown of a good name. As we settle into our practice today, who is somebody that you know who embodies a soul trait that you admire, that makes them into a good person. Think of what that soul trait is. And part of what we're going to do today in our practice is to see if by honoring that person and their soul trait, you might be able to bring that soul trait into your practice today. It's one of the highest ways to honor someone. So again, on whom would you bestow a Keter Shem Tov, the crown of a good name? And what is a soul trait that that person embodies that leads to this honor? So we're gonna start by sitting in Sukhasana, cross-legged position. Cross your right shin in front of your left shin. If you have compression in your lower back, you might wanna sit up on one of your blocks or on a book. Hands on top of your knees, palms facing up. And inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose. Exhale out your mouth. Good. 
One more time, inhale. And exhale. And now moving at your pace, take two more cycles of breath, using the inhale as an opportunity to lengthen through the torso and lift up through the crown of your head. And the exhale is an opportunity to let go of the distractions, the weight that you're carrying in your shoulders. We're gonna to start to open up our hips. So if you're sitting on a block or a book, come off of it, put it off to the side and press the soles of your feet together. And your legs are kind of in a diamond shape. Grab onto your feet, open up the soles of your feet towards the ceiling and then lengthen through your torso. And as you exhale, start to lower your torso down towards your feet. Notice the opening of your hips. And you might choose to stop about a third of the way down towards your feet or halfway. Or those of you that are particularly open might place your forearms onto the ground and drop your chest pretty much all the way to your feet. Let's take three cycles of breath, inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. And again, inhale. And an audible exhale out your mouth. Next inhale brings your torso back up. And now widen your legs apart, straight out to either side of the room. You can sit up on that block again, if you'd like. Put your fingertips on the ground. We're gonna do a seated wide-legged forward fold. Start to walk your fingertips forward. Some of you are gonna go, be able to go out pretty far. Others who have tight hamstrings like me, and this is where I'm stopping. Flatten your palms onto the ground. And we're gonna be here for several cycles of breath. And as we start to consider this soul trait of honor, one of the most Featured scholars of Musar, Alan Marinus, shares the following. Honor, respect, and dignity are due to each and every human being, not because of the greatness of their achievements or how they have behaved, but because they are home to a soul that is inherently holy. And what I love about this idea is that it just flattens the playing field and puts all of us as human beings onto a similar level. I know that there are some people who feel that honor and respect is something that you need to earn but I think what our Jewish tradition teaches us is that honor is not earned. Honor is inherent to our birth, to our creation. What would life be like? What would our interactions and our relationships be like if the starting point was honor? Those were the glasses that we wore when we looked at other people. Start to walk your hands back in towards your body. 
and straighten up through your torso. And then bend your knees. And we're gonna come into Virasana, into hero's pose. And this is where your blocks or books will definitely come in handy. So start by sitting up on your knees. And if your knees are sensitive, um, it's great to fold over your mat or put a blanket underneath your knees and take at least one block between your ankles, hug that block with your ankles, and then sit down onto that block. You want your ankles and feet just outside of your hips or tush. And already, if this is pretty strenuous in your knees, the reason that you have two blocks is you might choose to sit up on both. So you decide the version that's best for you. And if you are not practicing with blocks or books and sitting in hero's pose is too much of a stretch, come back into Sukhasana, into a cross-legged position. So get yourself seated. And this pose is called Virasana. Vira in Sanskrit means hero. This is a great way to try to start to stretch your, and strengthen your thighs. This is gonna serve us well as we go deeper in the practice. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. And now take your arms out straight in front of you. Press your palms together, interlace your fingers flip your hands so that your palms face outward and straighten your arms. I'm going to start to open up our shoulders. So inhale and exhale. And then start to lift your arms up towards the ceiling. And if you have high blood pressure or other heart issues, Keep your arms straight out in front of you. Otherwise, your arms start to lift up. Arms come by your ears. Let's take a few cycles of breath. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale, start to lower your hands down. Flip your palms back so that they face towards your torso and then switch the interlace of your fingers. And same thing, flip your palms out towards the front of the room. And then as you take your next inhale, begin to lift your arms up towards the ceiling. Breathing. And then with your next exhale, begin to lower your hands, your arms down, flip your palms back towards your torso, and then release the interlace of your fingers and lower your arms and hands down alongside you. Inhale, arms come up in a T position. As you exhale, swing your right arm over to the left side of the room, Use your left arm to make a hook and grab on to your upper right arm. Again, opening up your shoulder, stretching that joint. Take a few cycles of breath. And the rabbis of the Talmud shared this hypothetical scenario that is so appropriate as we approach the Jewish holiday of Purim which comes right at the end of next week to emphasize the importance of honoring others. And the scenario is that what would you do if you are walking through your town on your way to synagogue or to a temple or a community gathering where the Megillah is being read? That's the scroll and the story that we use to tell the story of Purim. 
and you're walking along the way and you come upon a corpse. So pause for a moment, arms back out into a T position. This time take your left arm, swing it over to the right, use your right arm to make a hook, grab onto your upper left arm, resume your cycle of breathing. So you come upon a corpse. Now, if you're to stop and take care of the corpse and ensure that it gets a proper burial, there's no doubt you will not get to the synagogue on time. You will not be able to fulfill the mitzvah of hearing the Megillah being read. And the rabbis and the Talmud are crystal clear. The answer is you tend to the corpse. Above any ritual and any service that is associated between people and God comes our obligations to other people. Connecting with others, honoring them, always, always takes priority. Inhale, arms out into a T position and exhale, arms come down. Inhale, arms up into a T position. Exhale, lift your right arm up, bend your right elbow, lower your right hand to your upper back. And then inhale, lift your left arm up, take your left hand, grab onto your right elbow, draw that right elbow in towards your head. Take a few cycles of breath. One more inhale and exhale, arms come back out into a T position. Let's immediately do the second side. Inhale, lift your left arm up, bend your left elbow, lower your left hand to your upper back. Inhale, right arm up, take your right hand and grab onto your left elbow, hug that left elbow in towards your head. And another few cycles of breath. Take one more inhale and exhale, release your hands, arms come back out to the side in that T position and then lower your arms down. Inhale, arms up, palms face in towards each other. Exhale, lower your arms down. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, arms down. Inhale, one more time, arms up. This time, hold as you exhale. Inhale to lengthen through all four sides of your torso, which is what enables you to lift your arms higher up into the air. And then exhale, arms come down. Hands on top of your knees, palms facing up and close your eyes. So today, one opportunity through this practice is to put that Keter Shem Tov, the crown of a good name, on someone in your life and incorporate a soul trait from that person into your practice. And we also have an opportunity to honor what makes each one of us unique, the abilities we each have. That's part of what we're balancing in the practice of yoga. And author and speaker and mental health expert, Lisa Villa Prozen says, the greatest challenge of the human experience is discovering who you really are. The second greatest is living in a way that honors what you discovered.
So throughout our practice, if you can honor the soul trait of another person who is a hero for you as we sit in our hero's pose, and if you can also select one of your own soul traits to honor through this practice, what are their soul traits? Press your palms together in the center of your chest. Seal that in as your kavana, as your intention for this practice. Take another inhale. Exhale, open your eyes. Release your hands from being pressed together. Come off of your block. You put your blocks off to the side. I suggest having one at either side of the mat. And let's come into tabletop position. Hands directly underneath your shoulders. Spread your fingers apart. Index fingers point towards the top of the mat. Your back is in a neutral position. And then inhale into cow. Arch your back. Lift your chest and heart up. Lift your tush up. Exhale into cat. Round your back. Draw your belly into your chest. Inhale into cow. And exhale into cat. Inhale into cow. Really shine your chest and heart forward as you arch your back. And then exhale into cat. Draw your belly into your chest. Do that another couple of times on your own. And then bring your big toes to touch. Shift your hips back onto your heels. Widen your knees apart. Nestle your torso between your thighs. Lower your forehead onto the ground. Come into child's pose. We're going to be here for just two more cycles of breath. And then come back up into tabletop position, tuck your toes, begin to shift your hips up and back, and come into your first Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale through your nose, and exhale out your mouth, and then angle your heels towards the outer edges of your mat. It's going to help you to rotate your inner thigh towards the back of the room. Press your palms firmly into the mat. Lift up through your arms, your torso, shooting out your hips. And then turn your gaze between your palms. Start to walk your feet forward until your feet are just in back of your wrists or your hands and you're in Uttanasana forward fold. It's early on in the practice, so have a slight bend in your knees. Grab onto opposite elbows. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Begin to straighten your legs. Release your elbows. Place your hands on your hips. And keep your gaze on the ground as you start to rise up one vertebra at a time. And when you're standing up straight, that's when you lift up your gaze. Look towards the front of the room. Release your hands from your hips. Palms face forward. Standing in Tadasana, mountain pose. And pause for a moment. And be honest with yourself as you think about your demeanor when you enter a room full of other people. Imagine that you're standing in a crowd, again, pre-COVID, and you have a clipboard and you're making observations. What's your inclination? 
Is your clipboard filled with criticisms and critiques about the other people that you see? Is your clipboard filled with praise, observations of wonder? What I wanna encourage us to do throughout our yoga practice and in life is to lean way more towards the observations of praise and honor. That's what I want you to notice as we flow through our practice today. What are your abilities? What is it that you're accomplishing? And how are you bringing the soul traits of the person that you're honoring today into your practice? So standing with your feet together in Tadasana, inhale, arms up, Uttita Hastasana. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up, flatten your back, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, folding forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms back down in Tadasana, in mountain pose. That's a half sun salutation. Let's do it two more times. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, come halfway up. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down into Tadasana. Let's do it one more time. I'm just gonna cue the breath, you supply the movement. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Back in Tadasana, in mountain pose. Inhale, arms up. We're moving on. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward in Uttanasana. Bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your left leg back. Lower onto your left knee. Untuck your left toes. You're in a low lunge. You want your right knee stacked above your right ankle. And then start to push your right knee forward. Take another inhale. And exhale. And now inhale, rise up, lift your torso up, lift your arms up. Remember, if you have high blood pressure or heart issues, keep your arms forward. So pick the version that works best for you. Take another couple cycles of breath here. And then with your next exhale, lower your arms alongside your torso, reach them in back of you, interlace your fingers behind your back, start with a bend in your elbows, and then inhale, straighten your arms, Reach your knuckles back and down. Lift your heart and chest up. Let's add a small back bend to this. So you're bending towards the back of the room with your upper back. One more inhale. Exhale, lift the crown of your head up towards the ceiling. Release the interlace of your fingers. Hands frame your front foot. Tuck your left toes. Lift your left knee up and step your left foot forward to meet your right knee, right foot and your back in Uttanasana in forward fold. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down, Tadasana. Second side, inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up, flatten your back. 
Exhale, folding forward, bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your right leg back, lower onto your right knee, untuck your right toes, start in a low lunge, stack your left knee over your left ankle, Take another cycle of breath. And then inhale, torso up, arms up. Take the modification if that's what's best for you. Take another couple cycles of breath. And draw your right hip forward towards the front of the room. We have a tendency to let that right hip go out, which means that your hips aren't centered towards the front of the room. Keep your hips centered and then lower your arms, reach your arms in back of you, interlace your fingers, start with a bend in your elbows and then inhale to straighten your arms, reach your knuckles towards the back of the room. Take one cycle of breath like this. And then let's start to add in that Back bend, so inhale, lift your torso up, bend your upper back towards the back of the room, turn your gaze up towards the ceiling. Two more cycles of breath. And then lift the crown of your head up towards the ceiling, release the interlace of your hands, Hands come down onto the ground to frame your front foot. Tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up. Step your right foot forward to meet your left foot. You're in Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, come halfway up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale. Arms come down in Tadasana, mountain pose. We're gonna move on and build on this a little bit more. So inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward, bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your left leg back. And here is where you're going to have some options. Right now, we're in a high lunge. So option number one is to lower your left knee down onto the ground and take the low lunge. And option number two is to build on and to come into crescent pose. So inhale, lift your torso up, lift your arms up. And now everybody lower your arms so that they're parallel with the ground, reaching towards the front of the room. Press your palms together, interlace your fingers, flip your palms over, just like we did at the start of the practice, but this time you're adding on some balance work. And now inhale, lift your arms up towards the ceiling, bend deeper into your right knee, one more inhale and exhale. Release the interlace of your fingers. Lower your hands down, frame your right foot. And this time step your right foot back to meet your left foot. Bend your knees, come into a modified plank pose. Lower your chest onto the ground. Untuck your toes, press your palms into the ground by your upper ribs, draw your elbows in towards your torso, and inhale, lift up into low cobra. Those of you that would like to deepen this back bend, press your palms into the ground, push yourself up into upward facing dog. Knees come off the ground, hips come off the ground, chest reaches up and then everyone tuck your toes shift your hips up and back Adho Mukha Svanasana downward facing dog and now inhale step your left foot forward 
lower onto your right knee. So this is the modification if you want to take it. You'll be in low lunge. Everyone else, lift your right knee up. Come into the high lunge position. And then if you're coming into crescent pose, inhale, lift your torso up, lift your arms up. Couple cycles of breath in crescent. Your left knee is stacked above your left ankle. You're bending into your left knee, lowering your left thigh towards parallel, and then lower your arms down so that they're parallel with the ground and shooting out in front of you. Press your palms together, interlace your fingers, flip your palms around, inhale, lift your arms up, palms go up towards the ceiling, Two more cycles of breath. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. Exhale, release the interlace of your fingers. Lower your palms down. If your right knee is on the ground, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, and then step your right foot forward to the front of the mat. Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down. Pause for a moment. We just did a tremendous amount of work. And make an observation. What is something that you can honor about the poses that you just entered? So if you're standing here with your clipboard, what is the positive observation that you can make? Take another couple cycles of breath. And then step into the middle of your mat, the horizontal way. Step your feet about four, three and a half to four feet apart. Let's take a wide legged forward fold. Start with your hands on your hips. Inhale, lift your heart and chest up. Exhale, hinging at the hips, folding forward. Stop when your torso is parallel with the ground. Release your hands from your hips. Fingertips come onto the ground. Start to flatten your palms onto the ground. And two strategies, if this is challenging to do, one is to create more space, widen your legs. And the second is to take one of your blocks and bring the floor to you and press your palms into the block. Start to walk your hands back so that your fingertips are parallel with your big toe. Take another couple cycles of breath, whichever version of the pose you're in. And then hands come back onto your hips. Inhale, lift up through your torso. And exhale. Rotate your entire right leg out towards the right side of the room. Rotate your back foot in about 45 degrees. You want the heel of your right foot aligned with the arch of your back foot. Arms out into a T position. Inhale, lift up through the crown of your head. Exhale, start to bend into your front knee, into your right knee. Stack that right knee above your right ankle. We're just gonna pass through this warrior two, Virabhadrasana two pose. Lower your right forearm onto your right thigh. Swing your left arm up towards the ceiling. And then swing, rotate your left arm towards the front of the room. 
palm faces towards the back, towards the right side of your mat. This is a modified side angle pose, Parsvo Konasana. If you wanna take the traditional version, lower your right hand onto the ground outside of your right foot. Two more cycles of breath. Inhale and exhale and root down through your back foot. That's part of your foundation. One more exhale and then inhale, windmill your arms back up into warrior two, straighten your right leg and heel toe your back foot towards the front of the mat. And then inhale, reach out through your right arm. Your left hip goes towards the back of the room. Lower your right hand onto your shin, your ankle, or if you have your block or book, right outside of your right foot. And then reach your top arm up. Find yourself in triangle pose. Three cycles of breath. Inhale. And exhale, inhale, and exhale. One more inhale. And as you exhale, lift your torso up, arms out into a T position, hands come on your hips, and rotate your right foot to be parallel with your left foot, and pause for a moment. Returning to this idea of kavod, of honor, in the spirit of the Musar tradition and in Jewish tradition, the honor is not due to achievements of greatness. The honor is due to anyone who embodies a soul and who is a product of human life. And we honor the soul traits, not the form. In other words, the award today does not go to the person who has the most aligned version of a triangle pose. The honor goes to those of you who are practicing with compassion, with patience, with humility. So recenter yourself and let's take the second side. Rotate your entire left leg out towards the left Angle your back foot in about 45 degrees. Arms come out into a T position. Inhale, lift up through your torso and the crown of your head. And then exhale, start to bend into your right knee, your left knee, excuse me. And right away, this is warrior two. We're gonna turn this into a side angle pose. Lower your left arm onto your left thigh and then reach your top arm up and you're in a modified Parsvo Konasana pose, root into your back foot, root into your front foot. If you wanna take the traditional version of the pose, lower your left hand outside of your left foot and then rotate your top arm towards the front of the room and palm faces towards the left side of the mat. Three cycles of breath, inhale and exhale and pull your left hip back, which in turn brings your right hip forward. One more inhale and exhale. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, windmill your arms back up into a warrior two position straighten your left leg, lower your hands onto your hips for a moment, narrow your stance. So bring your back foot in a couple of inches and then arms out into a T position, reach your left arm forward, your hip goes towards the back of the room and then lower your left hand onto your shin, your ankle, the ground or a block outside of your left foot, 
Top arm goes up towards the ceiling. Three cycles of breath in Trikonasana, triangle pose. One more inhale and exhale. Inhale to come up, arms out in that T position, hands on your hips and rotate your left foot to be parallel with your right foot. Let's take one more wide-legged forward fold. This time interlace your fingers behind your back. Start with a bend in your elbows. Inhale, lift your heart and chest up. Exhale, start to fold forward. Your chest stops when it's parallel with the ground and then straighten your arms. Knuckles go towards the back of the room and then float your knuckles up towards the ceiling and then begin to drop your head so that the crown of your head points down towards the ground. This is Prasarita Padottanasana C. Three cycles of breath. Release the interlace of your fingers, hands float down to your hips, draw your elbows in towards each other in back of your chest, and then start to lift your torso up. And step your feet together. Pause for a moment, take a few cycles of breath. I wanna share another piece of wisdom as we move deeper in our practice and this idea of honor and how we approach that soul trait. Rabbi Bachya Ibn Pakuda in Duties of the Heart shares a wonderful anecdote that heightens the importance of making these positive, honorable observations. Once a pious person was talking with her disciples and as they passed a rotted dog's carcass. You know, for some reason, death and corpses keep popping up, but bear with me. Her student said, how awful is the stench of this carcass? How white are its teeth? She responded. So cultivating this ability to look out into the world and find opportunities for honor, for praise, for wonder, we're gonna move into Vrikshasana, into tree pose. Balance positions uh, can be really hard and certainly an opportunity to be skeptical, to be down on yourself. So we're gonna pivot. Instead of seeing the carcass, we're gonna see the white teeth. Step your feet hip width apart, root down through your feet, shift the weight of your body onto your right foot, Inhale to lift your left knee up, interlace your fingers around your left knee, straighten up through your torso, inhale, and exhale. Use your left hand to open your left knee up towards the left side of the room, reach down with your left hand, grab onto your left ankle, and press the sole of your left foot into your right thigh, and press your right thigh back into your left foot and then press your palms together in the center of your chest. If you'd like a modification, press the sole of your foot into your shin or lower your toes onto the ground and press the heel of your left foot right above your right ankle. Do not, I repeat, do not jam your foot into your knee. Don't press into a joint. Center your hips towards the front of the room while simultaneously opening up your left knee further towards the left side of the room. 
And then another few cycles of breath. If you're feeling a sense of stability, reach your arms up towards the ceiling or stop halfway. If you're one of the high blood pressure heart people, One more inhale and exhale, lower your arms, bring your left knee into your chest and step your left foot down. Distribute the weight of your body equally in your feet, shake it out. Pause for a moment. And as you completed Vrikshasana on that first side, were you noticing the stench or the white teeth. Shift the weight of your body this time onto your left foot, draw your right knee into your chest, interlace your fingers around your right knee and pause. Use your right hand to open up your right knee towards the right side of the room, grab onto your right ankle and press the sole of your right foot into your left thigh. Press that left thigh back into your right foot and then press your palms together in the center of your chest. Keep your hips squared towards the front of the room while simultaneously opening up your right knee further to the right. Once you feel a sense of stability, you can lift your arms up, coming into the full expression of a tree pose for Shasana. Two more cycles of breath. Arms come down, bring your right knee in and lower onto your right foot. Great job. Come back to stand at the top of your mat. We are nearing our peak pose, the pose that we've been working up to. We're gonna do one more preparatory pose to get our body fully prepared. It's a little redundant and repetitive, a prep pose to get prepared. Step your feet about hip width apart, hands on your hips. Step your left leg back, angle your left foot in 45 degrees towards the top of the mat with your hands on your hips rotate your hips towards the front of the mat. That's gonna be a big component part of our peak pose, keeping our hips squared and centered as much as possible. Inhale, lift up through your torso and exhale, start to fold forward. This is a modified Parsvottanasana, a modified pyramid pose chest comes out over your right leg and then drop your fingertips down towards the ground. Inhale and exhale. One more inhale and exhale. And then hands back on your hips, lift up through your torso and step your left foot forward. Second side, inhale, step your right leg back, angle your right foot in 45 degrees towards the top of the mat, hands on your hips, center your hips towards the front of the mat. Inhale, lifting up through your torso and the crown of your head. And as you exhale, Start to fold forward, draping your hip, your torso over your left leg. When you're down about halfway, release your hands from your hips, fingertips come down towards the ground. Three cycles of breath. And as you inhale, shift your left hip back, which helps you to shift your right hip forward. So working on that squared alignment in the hips. Okay. 
One more inhale. And exhale, hands come back up towards your hips, lift your torso up and step your right foot forward. Good job. We have arrived at our peak pose, Vira Bhadrasana One, which is most often translated as warrior one pose, but sticking true to the Sanskrit, like I shared at the start, Vira is best translated as hero. So our peak pose for today is that hero pose in honor of that Keter Shem Tov, that crown of a good name that you are bestowing on someone else in your life and emulating that person's soul trait through your practice. So if that person's soul trait is gonna show up anywhere, right here, right now is where you apply it. So start with your feet together, big toes touching, heels a couple of inches apart. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, lower your arms down, hands on your hips. And then inhale, step your left leg back, angle your left foot in about 45 degrees. And just like we've been doing, try to square your hips towards the front of the mat. And then with your next inhale, lift back up through your torso. And exhale, start to bend into your right knee. Right knee stacks above your right ankle. You're dropping your right thigh towards parallel with the ground. Rotate your hips towards center. And notice I'm saying towards, they're not gonna get to be perfectly centered. And then release your hands from your hips. Inhale, arms come out towards the front. This is where you're stopping if you have high blood pressure. Otherwise, arms float up towards the ceiling. And this is Vira Bhadrasana One, Hero Pose One. Let's take another couple cycles of breath. and then straighten your front leg, lower your arms down, hands on your hips, and step your back foot forward towards the front of the room. Good job, we're gonna have another opportunity to try that out. So start with your feet together, big toes touching, heels a couple of inches apart. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, lower your arms down, hands on your hips, step your right leg back, Angle your right foot in 45 degrees and align the heel of your front foot with the heel of your back foot. So a lot of yoga teachers like to say, don't stand on a tightrope. Your feet are apart. And inhale, lifting up through your torso and the crown of your head and exhale, starting to bend into your left knee, stack your left knee above your left ankle. Rotate your hips towards the front of the room. Release your hands from your hips. And inhale, arms come out in front of you and pause. And if you're moving on, arms come up towards the ceiling. And you're in Vira Bhadrasana one. Root down through your right foot all four sides. Energetically trace the line of your straight right leg from your heel to your hip, and then trace that energy up through your torso, shooting out through your arms, soften your tongue, See the white teeth. What is the soul trait that's serving you well through this pose that you can honor? One more inhale. Exhale, lower your hands onto your hips, straighten your left leg, and then step your back foot forward. 
return to Tadasana, mountain pose. Release your hands from your hips. We're gonna do warrior one, one more time, but coming into it from a different position. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Have a slight bend in your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your right leg back. Step your left leg to meet it. You're in plank position. Bend your knees and lower them down for a modified plank. Otherwise, inhale, lift your hips up. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale, reach your right leg up and back. Exhale, draw your right knee in towards your chest. Step your right foot forward. Lower your left heel onto the ground. Heel to heel alignment, which means the heel of your right foot is aligned with the heel of your back foot, your left foot. And now inhale to lift your torso up, lift your arms up, and here you're back in warrior one, in hero pose one. Inhale, dropping your right thigh towards parallel with the ground as you root into your back foot. One more inhale. Exhale, lower your hands, frame your front foot, lift your left heel up, flat your palm, step your right leg back. You're in plank or modified plank. And then shift your hips up, Adho Mukha Svanasana. And second side, inhale, left leg reaches up and back. Exhale, draw your left knee into your chest. Step your left foot forward, lower onto your right heel, heel to heel alignment. Inhale, chest up, arms out or up. Virabhadrasana one, warrior one, hero pose one. Two more cycles of breath. Again, pressing through all four sides of that back foot. Centering your hips towards the front of the room. One more inhale. Exhale, lower your hands. Lift your right foot up. Step your left leg back. And now everyone lower onto your knees. Bring your big toes to touch. Shift your hips back onto your heels. Lower your forearms. Nestle your torso between your thighs and lower onto your forehead and come into child's pose. And breathe. You're gonna be down here for several cycles. And in excavating the soul trait of honor, of kavod, Alan Marinus, our scholar, our featured scholar during our Musar quest, acknowledges that the goal here is not to go so far to the end of the spectrum where all you see is the world through rose-colored glasses and you're ignoring the imperfections. That's not the goal here. Specifically, he says that honoring others does not mean giving up the power and practice of exercising judgment, but it puts the focus on moving away from unwise, useless, habitual, and even destructive acts of judgment. So again, return to this idea. You're in a room with a crowd. You're standing there with your clipboard and you're making these observations. Which are the observations that fall into that category of unwise, useless, habitual, and destructive? Tear up that list. Push the rotting stench of that carcass away from you. See the white teeth.
Seek out people on whom you can bestow that Keter Shem Tov, the crown of a good name. From child's pose, start to walk your hands forward. Lift your forehead up. Lift your torso up. Swing your legs out from under you towards the front of your room. Let's come into Paschimottanasana, a seated forward fold. Start in Dandasana in staff position. Press your hands down by your hips. Straighten your arms. Take a cycle of breath. And then inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Lower your hands to your shins, your ankles, or your feet. If you chose to practice with a strap, this is a great place to use that strap. Hook the strap around your front feet. Start to bring your chest towards your thighs. Another couple cycles of breath. And either release your strap or release your hands from your feet, your ankles, or your shins. Lift your torso up. Bend your knees. Plant the soles of your foot into the ground. Reach your arms out in front of you and start to lower down onto your back. Engage your core. Lower down one vertebra at a time. Lower your arms onto the mat beside your torso. Walk your feet in a couple of inches until your heels hit your fingertips. And we're gonna come into Setu Bandha Sarvangasana, bridge pose. And if you are in the mood for a restorative bridge pose, take your blocks or books, stack them one on top of the other, and everyone press into your feet, lift your hips up. If you're going for the restorative version of the pose, you're gonna slide your block or book tower underneath your sacrum and lower down. Otherwise start to rotate your shoulders and nestle them underneath your torso. Interlace your fingers. Reach your knuckles towards the front of the room. Press your knees forward. Reach your hips up higher towards the ceiling. And whichever version of bridge pose you've chosen, you're in bridge pose. Take three more cycles of breath at your pace. And then with your next exhale, release the interlace of your fingers, lower your hips down to the ground, release your shoulders from underneath your torso, draw your knees into your chest and shift your hips over towards the right side of the mat. Let your knees fall to the left, knees come up to the height of your hips, extend your right arm out towards the right, Turn your gaze over to the right. You can use your left hand to grab onto your top knee in this simple twist, reclined twist. Knees come back up towards the ceiling. This time shift your hips over to the left edge of the mat. Let your knees fall over to the right. Knees come to the height of your right hips, 
right hand on your top knee, left arm out to the left, turn your gaze out to the left, couple cycles of breath. Knees come up towards the ceiling. And then stretch your right leg out, lower onto your right heel, stretch your left leg out, lower onto your left heel. Let your ankles roll open, arms come alongside your torso, palms facing up, and settle into your Shavasana, your final resting pose. And let each inhale draw in a wave of oxygen. Feel that oxygen spreading into your muscles to bring relief. Use the exhale to push out of your mind any distractions that might be lingering. Wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. Draw your knees into your chest and pause. And then whichever you prefer, either rock forward and back and push yourself up into a seated position or let your knees fall over to the right. Come onto the right side of your torso and push yourself up into a seated position. Place your hands on top of your knees, palms facing up. And I wanna to return to the hypothetical scenario that I shared with you from the Talmud. This dilemma of deciding, do you attend to the corpse that you find or do you fulfill the obligation of hearing Mikilat Esther, the scroll associated with the Jewish holiday of Purim. And as a reminder, the rabbis from the Talmud are clear, you choose to send tend to the corpse, you honor the human being. And what's extra noteworthy about that is that as much as we honor somebody who has passed away, that should only illustrate the importance of honoring people who are alive and present in our life right now. And so if you were to give out one more Keter Shem Tov, one more crown of a good name, this time choose someone who's present in your life, who's alive, What is that soul trait of theirs that you're honoring? Press your palms together in the center of your chest. And I wanna end with a piece of wisdom that is commonly associated with the word namaste. My soul honors your soul. I honor the place within you where the entire universe resides. 
I honor the light, love, truth, beauty, and peace within you because it is also within me. In sharing these things, we are united. We are the same. We are one. Inhale. And exhale, lower your chin to your chest. Thank you so much for honoring yourself through your practice and honoring both the memory and current heartbeat of those you admire, those who are the viras in your life, the heroes in your life. And open your eyes, lift your chin up. Namaste and Shabbat Shalom.